Chris, I can't believe you're helping the principal with morning announcements today. And I can't believe I forgot to wear pants. Meg, give him your pants. Fine. Okay, Chris, while you make these announcements, I'm going to be massaging your shoulders just so I can say in court that I do it to everyone. Go ahead. Okay. God. Good. Good. Movement. Morning. Morning. Meeting. You know what? You're done. Good job. Great job, Chris. Good morning, Vietnam! <sighs> and that's how you do an announcement. Not like that tubelard griffin. <laughs> I have to open the window to get that fat kid smell out. <laughs> <laughs> Keith? Keith, what's the matter? Principal Shepard fat-shamed Chris in front of the whole school. Oh, that oh. fat is going to win him biggest boy at the state fair. Peter. They should not be insulted. To me. Yeah, yeah. Give us a strut downstairs. Oh, he's the big, big boy. He's the biggest boy. He's the big, big boy. He's the biggest boy. He's the big... If there's nothing else... There's still the agenda item of you fat-shaming Chris Griffin. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, but fat-shaming is not okay. This, this is, is a... my son we're talking about. Me. Sure. In any case, Principal Shepard needs to be held accountable for fat shaming my son, no matter how fat or shameful he may be. Shepard, you're fired. Alexa, play the sad song from Stripes. Thanks for taking me to the movies, Peter. Ah, uh, sure, Lois. Yeah. Hello, Griffins. That's right. And it's just first name, Shepard, now that you've had me fired and I have no income. We can't let this stand. We have to do something for him. What are we supposed to do? He brought this on himself. Hey, you can live with us. Wow, that's great news. Also, would it make any sense to put all the beds in one room and make one room a trampoline room? Oh, well, now that's interesting. Well, here we are. Mr. and Mrs. Griffin, I don't know how to thank you. I've never seen this man before in my life. Principal Shepard, what are you doing here? Yes. Onward and upward. Now, I believe you have some masturbating to do, young man. I already did it. Attention, Attention Griffins. Griffins. Could, Could Peter, Peter Griffin, Griffin please report to the backyard? Ooh. Shut up! Uh, we think you would be more comfortable eating in the special breakfast unit. <laughs> Why can't I just eat with my family? Hey, you must be Miss Judy. Ow, that's my wrist! That's my wrist, Miss Judy! Ow! Attention, Griffins. Someone drew a penis on my curve. Couldn't have been me. I don't even know what penises look like, because I'm not gay. Now, if it was a vagina, I'd say you have your man. I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, your car got donged. Yeah, I did it. It was me. Sorry I'm late. I was just... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, en français, Monsieur Griffin. God. All right, never mind that. Yet. Just Out of earshot so I can wrap your knuckles with a ruler. Ah! That's it! I want you out of our house right now! We are sick of Very you! Well. Well, I'll get out of your hair if you'll all just help me get my things out of the basement. Wait a minute. That's yeah. right. Until you all have better attitudes, you're in detention. He, he put us in detention in our own house? Oh, my God! Allahu Akbar! Uh, okay. Okay, we're gonna deal with that thing, and then we're gonna deal with detention. How long is Principal Shepard gonna keep us in detention down here? The question oh. is, how are we gonna get out? All right, we're playing. No, 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 Meg, Meg, Meg! All right, who's well, next? Well, maybe we can take this time to learn more about each other. Sorry, Lois, we can't. We Don't gotta... you see? This must have been why Principal Shepard locked us down here. We've never sat down and talked like Just this. Prince... Like when my old high school crush asked to be my friend on Facebook. Karen Altman? Could you wire me $3,000 for old times' sake? Or she was a snack. Checkmate. All right, last call for new business. All oh, right. My name is Peter Griffin, and in conclusion, I think the school should rehire Principal Shepard. I hereby reinstate Principal Shepard. I love you, baby. Sorry, Lois, I needed you out of the way so I could kiss this lady. Wait, who drew this dong on my desk? Not me. I wouldn't even know how to draw Art. one. I've yeah, I did it. It was me.
That's my new pitching machine, Lois. And look, it can turn our car into a silly tank. Watch me nail Cleveland. I got one too, bitch. Uh-oh. Stand back. The pitching machine is the only plumber we'll need. And I'm waking up outside again. Gotta sleep to grow, guys. Gotta sleep to grow. Oh, thanks for letting us stay here, Daddy. We'll be out of your hair as soon as the house dries out. Right. You know, Daddy, I didn't know you were leaving town. Where are you going? Ah, uh, just some funeral. I'll be back in a couple of days. But I left... It was Meredith, your old nanny. Meredith? Oh, I loved that woman. Daddy, I'm coming with you. <sighs> Fine. Ass, gas, or grass. No one rides free. Uh, I guess gas? That's what all the prudes say. Guys, I had a great idea. Listen, I was thinking, what if we make some extra cash by turning this place into a hotel? Great idea, Peter. Awesome. We're all in. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go apologize to the hotel towels for what's about okay. to happen to them. Now, here are your assignments. Anderson, your late night vomit. Russo, you'll be in the ladies' room. <laughs> Look at Edwards. He's into it. <laughs> at ease. All right. For this hotel operation to work, we all gotta pull our weight around here. Brian, you'll tend the bar and dole out snappy tidbits of advice. All right, stop by Brian's bar for some drinks, thinks, and winks. And I'll be the concierge, astutely learning everything there is to know about our guests. That will be my one task. Well, ah, and here come our guests now. Dr. Hartman and his overbearing mother, they never travel apart. If he could just meet the right woman, he'd find the independence he needs. The librarian, never married. Adult Disney woman. First kiss was with a boy at theater camp who would one day get beaten up by David Hyde Pierce for being too fancy. Seconds. What these guests need is someone to arrange a little romance in their lives. And I'm the perfect man for the job. After all, I do all of Kevin Spacey's matchmaking. Dad, Dad, I, I think I mixed up Mayor West's bag with Bruce and Jeffrey's. Leather chaps, saddle, bull whip, whip rope, fancy, fancy boots. boots. Yep, yep, this, this is, is ours. Mine. All right, Brian, I've devised a way to get the librarian and Dr. Hartman together. You see, here she comes. <laughs> oh, oh, is there a little, <clears throat> is there a little try? <laughs> 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 You saved my life! Well, how can I ever repay you? Money? Please. I believe you dropped this. The blueberries are still intact. Shame to let something so sweet go to waste. Uh oh, Brian. Looks like we've got a love triangle on our hands. It'll liquefy from the enzymes in your saliva. <laughs> 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 All right, I gotta find a bathroom because that's mostly what life is after 60. Huh? Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, it's my fault, really. Hi, I... I'm Jacqueline. I'm Meredith's We're sister. Back. Meredith loved her time as a nanny. It's a shame she had to give it up after the affair. Affair? Huh. I... They were seeing each other, but then his wife found out and forced him to fire her. <gasps> Daddy and Meredith had an affair. That's why she left me. Oh, this is horrible. Now, Daddy, you had an affair with Meredith? Damn. The no. horn part in Su Studio gave your mother a headache that lasted five years. What was I supposed was, to do? She was the only person in that house who was really there for me, and you took her away. Well, what was I supposed to tell you? How many Viagras and what position? Six, and something I call the old pocket knife. Evening. I'm looking forward to the doctor being in. <laughs> Looks like you've got your hands full. You're telling me? I just don't know what to do. Well, who do you think I should choose? Oh, well, a threesome. <gasps> Excuse me? Uh, not with me. With me? Hi, I'm Lois Griffin. I, uh, I just wanted to be here today to say goodbye to Meredith and thank you. You know she can't hear you, right? Even today you're teaching me that the people you love most of all can still betray you. What 
don't you get in here and find out? Hmm. Come on, I have to show you something first. I figured you can come here to sit whenever you miss Meredith. I'm sorry, Lois. You were right. People you love can betray you. But if they're rich enough, they can buy apology ponds. Thank you, Daddy. Oh, what, so now we gotta talk sports to pass the time? Or maybe watch Gilmore Girls. Thing. I was a baseball prodigy. It was back home in the Cuban League. When I was nine, my father took me to my first baseball game. Please rise for the Cuban National Anthem. But I never saw any. Yeah! <laughs> All right! But from that day on, I fell in love with baseball. I didn't even need the full montage. I was even recruited to play on Cuba's national team because hurricane season was February through January. Every time a hurricane would sweep through, decimating the island, causing hundreds of dollars worth of damage. Ah. But I was determined. Then came my chance. It came in my ass, I'm going to America. Okay, when we land in America, we all have to stop saying Cuba. It was beautiful. I still remember my first major league game. It was four hours and 25 minutes long. I was like, what the couple? You know, you're not the only one who got a taste of sports glory. I was a competitive tennis player, but I was the breath of fresh air that the stuffy tennis world needed. I was born into a real tennis fan, but it was understood I'd grow up to be a tennis player like my father, and his father before him, and his father before him. I had six brothers, but they'd all sliced off their hands opening a tennis ball can. Hey guys, anyone want to play tennis? Practices were intense. Yeah, I feel like you skipped over a very big story point. <laughs> but the work paid off. I got invited to the first U.S. Open, which at the time was called the U.S. Now Open. I was the bad boy of tennis, and my unconventional style of play changed the game, and eventually, the no-handed backhand. Uh, I love your backhand! That sounds like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> But I wouldn't settle for just that. My goal was the coveted Grand Slam. It was an honor playing for Freddy on grass that day. He later died. The doctor said it was asphalt. Ah! Oh. Tatum O'Seventies, the hottest actress of the era. We became New York's it couple of the 70s. By the 1980s, things were starting to unravel. Damn it! I became famous for smashing rackets when things didn't go my way. Of course, back then, we didn't have multiple rackets, so I was forced to play with it. U.S. Open, my first serve hit a plane, causing it to go tragically off course and hit a building. Everyone blamed the Muslims. Rocky. Like most, my day began with block letters of my name floating past the screen. I was an Italian guy from the south side who never had a chance in life. But I had a dream, to one day be the heavyweight champ. I was a two-bit knuckle breaker for the mob, but it was a flash mob. You owe us two grand. Like most fighters, I fell in love with the local artistic girl who worked at the pet shop. Yo, Lois, the San Gennaro Festival was last weekend. You know, I was wondering if uh, maybe you might want to go to it with me. I was not the smartest guy, but I wasn't going to give up. I fought my way up through the amateur ranks. Most fights, my greatest challenge was entering the yeah. ring without getting completely tangled in the ropes. Little help! Is my butt out? I became known as an up-and-comer with a mean left hook. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lois and I were getting serious. What would you think about spending the previous part of your life with me? I'm afraid that's not possible, Peter. Logical. I defeated Lennox Lewis in the news, Evander Sallyfield, and Roberto Duran Duran. So finally, I got my shot at the title against a world champion, Marvelous Marvin, Mrs. Mason. I fought my heart out. 
I dug deep and had a kick-ass song on my side. The swollen eyes weren't from the fight. There was a cat in the arena, and I was highly allergic. But I'd done it. Ben, only... are you busy last week? She had nailed me. I was, in fact, free last week. Eventually, I became the champ. Hey, Joe, what about you? You're a pretty athletic guy. You got any sports stories? Hey, I took part in the Crystal Light Aerobics Competition. Representing Valley Health and Racket in Orlando, Mama Hartnett, Debbie Harvey, and Marissa McKeechen. Here I am. That guy in the left's dead. Asphalt. Anthony Geiger.